Hello everybody. So today we're going to look at a Dodge Dart 1.4 turbo um, doing a cylinder compression test with an actual Pico scope. And this is what I got. It's a known good vehicle. And again, it's on a Dodge Dart. The engine 1.4 turbo is found on the PF chassis Dart, known as a compact US wideband, also on the A Barth. You can find it. All right, so we're looking, looking at it. And this is a black line I created on the waveform here. Um, it's going to be a representation of zero PSI. So anything below the black line is vacuum. Anything above it is pressure. So let's move along here. All right, the zero degrees at the bottom of the dotted lines, you see one, two, three, four, five partitions. This, these dotted lines that go vertically down, uh, you'll see zero degrees at the end in the box, and then 180 degrees, 360 degrees, 540 degrees, and 720 degrees. Those are indications of the crankshaft's position. So you got four cycles, four power strokes, I'm sorry, four uh, different strokes of the piston. So we're going to get into the strokes and the valve positions right now uh, in a sec here. So that's vacuum right there. That's vacuum. I drew a picture of a piston there. Um, and that piston is about halfway up the cylinder. TDC is the top, obviously. BDC is bottom dead center. So the 180 degree mark would be bottom dead center. The 540 degree partition line with the dots is bottom dead center. So top dead center in this is gonna be zero degrees, 360 degrees, and then 720 degrees. So TDC compression at zero, TDC exhaust at 360, and TDC compression again at 720. And this is just one cylinder that we're looking at here. So this is what a traditional compression gauge would look like on the same test running at idle about 50% of your cranking compression. All right, moving along, this is what it looks like in the cylinder. Pistons moving down on the power stroke, valves are shut. And then we're at bottom dead center power stroke. Our exhaust valve is opening, intake valve closed still. Now we're going upward with the piston, the exhaust valve opening further because it's the exhaust stroke. Now right there, you see both valves are open. That's actually a valve overlap. Um, that's useful you know, for higher RPM control, less overlap, lower RPM stability, high overlap, high RPM uh, performance. All right, moving on. We got the intake stroke, intake valves are open, and the exhaust valves shut. Pistons moving down. We create a negative pressure, so vacuum. And then pistons going up on the compression stroke. Valves are shut. You get a huge spike. All right, so this is basically a more involved layout with everything marked that I just told you. All right, that's it.